Hey Excel users, how are you doing? In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a dynamic Microsoft Word table where the number of rows and columns of that table matches the number of rows and columns of the Excel data set that the Word table is based on. So on the left hand side, we've got a data set, Excel data set, and it's got nine columns. And the first column is order date, and the last column is profit. And it's got a number of rows, as you can see. And in the right, uh, you've got the VBA coding, uh, which when you run it, it creates the word table based on the Excel data set. So uh, the first thing is we need to declare the variables. So the first variable is word app. That's going to be the word application object. And uh, the second variable is an object type is the word document. And then the third one is the worksheet, which is the Excel worksheet. And that the data set is based in. Then you've got integer row and integer column. They're both of data type integer and they can be used as looping variables for the row and column number of the data cell, which will be the same as the row and column of the word table as well as the Excel cell data set. Then lastly, we've got the last row and the last column, and that's going to be used to work out the dimension of the Excel data set. Uh, in terms of rows and columns, which will be used as the number of rows and columns for the word table for its structure. The next thing is we're going to be creating uh, the word application object and, and we're going to be signing it to the word app uh, variable. Now we're using the late binding method. A late binding method means we're creating the word object um, within Excel, uh, within the code itself during runtime. So we don't have to worry about going to tools and then click on clicking on references and then assigning the Microsoft Word library um, uh, checking it and um, making reference to it uh, for early binding so we don't have to worry about that so once the word app application object is created then we as we've set the visible properties true to make the, the word application visible so once that's done, then we add a, a document to the, the word app that's handled by this line here. And that's going to be assigned to the word document. And then from now on, we can be referring to the word document, which is based on the word app. Now this line here, it sets the orientation of the page um, as landscape. And the code for that is page setup the orientation equals one. So if you wanted it to be landscape, that would be one. If you wanted it to be portrait, that would be zero. And then this block of code here, what that does, it sets up the, the word document margins, left, right, top, and bottom, um, to margin size a half, 0.5. Now with margins, for word, and table column widths, you can't use um, number for margins uh, for uh, in terms of inches numbers uh, we've got to convert that into points now one inch as far as words concerned is equivalent to 72 points so what I've done is I've created a custom function called convert inches to point where you put in the inches and it automatically works out the points and assigns it to the to the setting so when you go further down this is the uh, the custom function so what it does is it's got double number as the input parameter um, and that would be the inches uh, and then what we do with that is uh, that would be of type double and then the return type would also be double and the value is simply the input value in terms of inches multiplied by 72 so we go back to the top again then for margin convert to inches half of the 72 will be 36 points so that's going to be the points assigned to the left margin and because we're using half inch all the way through for the margin size that's going to be 72 sorry, sorry 36 points all the way down through and this block of code here and uh, what we do first is we assign the worksheet object as the, the data sheet which is data and then from that worksheet object we will work out the number of rows and columns the, the dimension of the data set that's handled by these two lines here. That's integer last row and integer last column. Then now we've got all that information, then from 
a word document we add a table to the word document and that will be based on the number of rows and number of columns of the excel data set as handled by this line here then the next part is um, we're going to specifically assign column widths for each of the columns of the the word table so again with word margins as and as well as table column widths we use points rather than inches so again i'm using the convert inches to points function and if you can see here the extra data you've got all the data here and the last column is profit so put the names of the fields against each of the, the columns you've got column one to column eight all of the columns are going to be one inch size apart from custom name which is one and a half inches because that column is going to be wider uh, because you could have longer names and the other one is product name and the product name um, needs to be big, bigger because you've got as you can see uh, long names for the product name so for that I've set the the number of inches to 3 and then the custom functions multiplies that by 72 and assigns that to the column width for product name and then once we've done that we use a looping variable integer row and integer column and what that does is um, it cycles through every row uh, from the first row to the last row based on the last row of the data set and the first column to the last column of the data set using the value which we've calculated before earlier for integer last row and integer last column now with cell um, with the word table it also has a, a cell object and that has a row and column value and then you need to add the range.txt for the word table and then that's going to be assigned using the, the value of the same row same column of the cell of the worksheet object so that's a nested loop you've got two loops one loop within the other once that's done all the data has been assigned uh, to the word table from the excel data set uh, this block of code sets the borders of the word table to make it visible and then this block of code here for the word table the first row which is handled by this bit of code here uh, we're going to put the range or we're going to put the font uh, as bold type so that will make the first row head is bold and then this line here that sets the background pattern as a gray and that's handled by this uh, property here uh, of the the rows object of the word table and that uses RGB uh, coding so for gray color uh, these are the values for gray color for the background color for the top row and then you can use different values for different colors then this line here uh, which should probably be useful uh, for many people is if you've got an Excel data set that's really long and then the data that's um, uh, exported into the word table and spills into a second page or a third page uh, in Word. What we would like is we want the, the row header to be repeated. So you can see the row headers uh, on each page, uh, the field values. And this handle, this is the handle by this line here. And then this line here, what is this is going to do is it's going to align the paragraph, uh, everything uh, to the center. And the value for that is one. And then finally, we release the objects from memory. So Word document is nothing and Word app is nothing. Then I've got a message to say that the Word table is created from the Excel data. Now let's run the code and see what happens. So as you can see, a Word application object has been created and it's now been made visible. And you can see the VBA coding um, it's created a structure of nine columns and a number of rows and it's now pasting it's cycling through all the cells with the excel data and then pasting the data in the corresponding row and cell of the word table and now it's put borders in and it's shaded the top row and put bold the top row and then if you look on the second page it's repeated the header and start completed the generation of the, the word table.
And then the final thing what it does is just puts a message saying the word table is created from the XOR data. This VBA coding is available um, and it's available if you go to the description and you can download it from the link. Thanks for watching and watch out for my next video.